welcome back as we dive into the issues for today. Let's start with some golden news, as it were. The Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Dili Alaki, announced that Nigeria's gold bar transactions have boosted the country's foreign reserve assets by over $5 million. Alaki made this disclosure in a statement on Sunday. The minister said he recently presented the first batch of gold bars under the National Gold Purchase Program to President Bola Tinubu. According to him, the program aims to increase Nigeria's reserves and boost the value of the Naira against other currencies. Alaki added that the gold bars were sourced from artisanal and small-scale gold miners and that the transactions have added approximately 6 billion Naira to the economy. Well, we should get the insights now of Mohammed uh, Mukhtar Mohammed, an expert in international finance and economics in this discussion. Thanks for joining us, Mukhtar. Mukhtar, can you hear us? Thank you for having me, Justin. All right, let's start with uh, what I've called um, the golden news, the announcement that was made by the federal government. Uh, it seems to be some news to the government as a uh, the gold bars, according to the minister, is actually boosting our foreign reserves. Let's start from there and get your candid reaction. Well, um, this is what continuity can cause. Um, if you remember, this was um, something that started with the Buhari administration under the then minister, Kayode Fayemi. But I think um, after he left to become the governor of um, Ekiti State, we didn't see that vibrancy that we would have thought the solid mineral sector would have given us by now. So we saw um, a slowdown, and um, Dele Alaki have taken it um, to the next level with what he has done thus far to make sure that we see an actualization of that dream. Remember, the Kaudi Fahimi um, uh, position was to see the situation whereby they would add up to up to like 15 to 20 percent to the Nigerian GDP. But um, now we've seen maybe not not the way he thought it would be, but again, it's a um, better commensurate to what. Um, we had uh, before now. So I'm excited about that. Um, hopefully, we'll begin to see a lot of activities in that space. If you if you listen to that, mm. if you read through that report also, yes. it also stated that um, these are smaller, um, for smaller company from artisans. And mm. yes. so where you know that we have challenge with insurgency, mm. you've been in legal mining in some of this area. We saw yeah. what happened in Niger State where illegal mining caused the death of a lot of um, uh, people. So I think what we need to up the game, I think $5 million is, mm. uh, is very small. But again, mm. it's a good starting point. Mm. And to clear the air on that, uh, that money has not found its, its, its way into the foreign reserve yet. Mm. They said they are discussing with the, first, uh, with the Central Bank of Nigeria to make sure that um, we see that um, uh, fund find its way into the FX. Uh, the, to be selling it to the to to to, to, the, to CB and very soon. So that will be five million dollars in our falling reserve. That will be very uh, uh, huge. But again, like I said, um, um, it's it's good. But again, there's we we need more. Speaking of uh, more, like Oliver Twist, uh, always demanded more. You know, this particular amount, the five million dollars, like we uh, have actually uh, stipulated here was gotten from artisanal mining. Nigeria is blessed with uh, enormous uh, you know, solid minerals. How come we have not really harnessed all of that to the fullest? Now we are talking about uh, gold. I'm sure we have other minerals, lithium. We have so much that we can do. But um, how do we begin to harness this so that uh, we can begin to get foreign investors buy in and, of course, grow the economy and the foreign reserve that we are talking about can actually be boosted? I think first and foremost, we have to take it as a project. No government that really taking solid mineral as a project. Like I said, um, the person that saw value in that was the last um, um, minister, Kaudi Fayemi. And after he left, I don't think the next minister took the kind of uh, interest. And that is one. Now, Delia Laki has come in, he has said the right thing. He has gone to investment policies. Um, he has hosted investment meetings all over the country, all over the world. I'm telling them about the, the kind of mineral. Work. But again, we have to go a little bit further. To attract multinational, the first thing we have to do is to create, uh, to make sure that we have security. Why we are not seeing the value in most of these things is because most of the areas uh, yeah. have been uh, occupied by bandits, and True. the cause of banditry assistance now have been have been 
being the, the root cause of banditry, as a standard, is the solid minerals, which are illegally mined by some other foreign nationals. I mean, foreign nationals that are also are the ones mining this illegal mining in Samfara, in Kirby, and even in Sokoto State. And I think and the, the government need to do more. Then secondly, I think technology mm -hmm. is one area we've not been able to leverage on to begin to get value for that. I, I hopefully, with the uh, by the time you are able to attract uh, these conglomerate good companies to come in here, international investors, then they will come in with an improved technology, and that also will help. And again, uh, I have to advise the government because we must learn from our mistakes. Mm. And our mistake was that we shouldn't uh, just sell off the gold uh, to them. We will also be looking at how they can set up gold, gold um, refineries here in Nigeria, whereby some of these products can be refined into finished products mm -hmm. instead of just exporting the gold raw material. And we have some companies in Nigeria that are already looking at that. Like we have a particular company called Japo Go. They are mm -hmm. also looking at exportation of gold. And with the kind of um, prospectus they have brought out, it, it means that that sector can just be a game changer. Mm -hmm. Can even give us give us more in terms of um, um, effects than even the oil and gas sector. And the, these processes are not as difficult as what you have in the oil and gas sector. And then lastly, again, the, maybe the government will, will also think of giving amnesty to some of these bandits, knowing fully well that they are the ones that are operating some of these illegal mines. So by that, you will be able to open up those areas like what we saw in the Niger Delta. True. All right, let's just slide on and move on to other aspects. Let's talk about uh, Moody's, uh, their ratings. Uh, well, they seem to think that uh, the country's uh, credit outlook is good in as much as uh, it has said that uh, we are uh, our interest spending on debt could consume up to 36% of our revenue by the end of this year. What are your thoughts, really, Mukhtar? Uh, well, coming from where we are coming from, remember there was a time that the debt servicing was growing about 98%. And uh, that was what was responsible for the kind of massive borrowing that we saw during the Buhari administration. And so, um, if debt payments are about 36 percent i think that is uh, something to celebrate and then that means that uh, we've been able to reduce our debt profile just like what the minister for finance said some time ago that we are reducing our debt profile so i think it's a good it, it, it is good news um that 36 percent then again when you look at that 36 percent um, um how much of those percentage if we could just want imagine if we can do 36 percent of our, our, of, 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 of our budget spending on infrastructure. That would be huge. Yeah, but we are doing on debt servicing there. You know, the current expenditure is taking over almost over 60% of our budget uh, budget allocation, I mean 60-70%. So by the time you put that, you, you barely have um, anything for capital projects. So, but mm -hmm. again, um, it's still good comparable to 98% where we had to borrow for every meaningful project that we have to do. For me, I think it's a good thing. It, um, it, it makes that Nigerian is credit worthy, and that's a good pointer for investors to begin to look at the country. Okay, let us just uh, analyze some other aspect that Moody's mentioned in the report. Uh, it explained that the hawkish monetary policy stance of the Central Bank of Nigeria has pushed interest rates for local borrowing by the federal government from an average of 12.8% in 2023 to around 19% uh, in the first five months of 2024. It went on to say that this in turn is expected to increase interest payment by around 1% of the GDP in the year under review. Yes, we've said, so. we've said a lot about that. Um, I mean, your program, I think sometime last mm -hmm. week, you said about it, uh, whether the hawkish nation of the, of the central bank is doing any good to the local economy. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not doing any good to the local economy at all. Um, it tends to look at uh, what can we do to fix the effects rate, and then um, the only way we can fix this expert we cannot go enough to end in, uh, to end effects on our uh, export. So what do we have that we can bring in? Then we begin to think about um, attracting foreign direct investors. We are attracting portfolio investors for now, the hot money. And uh, those are what we are using now to try to stabilize our currency. And that is why the local businesses are now almost at a state of comatose because they have to borrow because of high costing of lending when you hike interest rates. So uh, in the short term, I think the CBN is looking at 
ways to sell it, uh, to stabilize the exchange rate. And like I keep saying, it is, no matter what the CDN tried to say, the major key driver of um, exchange rate volatility in Nigeria still remains. Um, I mean, the main key driver of um, uh, inflation in Nigeria still remains exchange rate volatility. So they need to address that. If they are able to address that, that will bring down uh, inflation uh, down. And the other way, they have to address the inflation projects, also take a bite of their revenue in terms of tariff for import duty. But you know, this government will tell you they need all the revenue, like we just said. Um, uh, initially, about 36% is, uh, is yeah. what is used for debt servicing. By the time you you begin to cut off their revenue, they might be using more in terms for debt services than what they are using now. So, which way, which way, but they, uh, we are not in a good state, especially um, the private sector, mm. not even the, uh, the public sector. All right, before we leave uh, the uh, the top the topic of uh, you know the CBN uh, you know interest rate and um, you know public finance and public debt stuff, but the CBN seems to believe. Let me even get your opinion. No, we have talked about this, but just uh, yesterday or two days ago, the CBN governor was in the news, and uh, uh, the bank is saying that uh, its monetary policy uh, of uh, tightening rates is actually working, as demonstrated according to them, the deceleration of the nation's. Uh, headline inflation how or do you share this uh, you know sentiment it is, um, well, yeah, what i need to ask is um, <laughs> justin i remember you saying you also go to the market sometimes to have a view of what if, if you go to the market have inflation come down of course of any good to come down definitely no so maybe uh, it, it tends to come down in their own sites uh, the cbn governors kept saying that then in the other on in the other hand he talked about uh, um, um, he talked about increase in terms of revenue. I mean, uh, income, uh, salaries for 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 the for the increment in salary that is not even yet there. It's only the, the wages the wages allowance they are paying. He said that is responsible. He talked about uh, uh, he talked about uh, also. I think he was talking about food uh, is um, food um, food food uh, production also also low. He, he, he talked about a lot of things that he felt that uh, are what are responsible for the inflationary pressure. Yeah. And then he now finally talked about the exchange rate volatility. And yeah. then he came down to say that, you know, some of these things we don't have control over, which the one they only have control over is to hike the rate. So definitely he answered the question for himself, <laughs> knowing that uh, these things have no work. Look at food inflation is over 40%. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I don't tend to agree with that. Okay, so let's just uh, dive on and just uh, finally go to the issue of on pension funds. Uh, you know, the grey uh, age would be interested in this, but uh, even before people retire, now the, you know, people are getting their voluntary uh, contribution. They are withdrawing from it because of um, the economic hardship, and it is becoming uh, very alarming. Uh, from the reports that we read, uh, the number of workers who made withdrawals from their voluntary pension contribution increased by 87.6% in the first quarter of this year that's from about 694 you know from the previous quarter to almost doubled 1302 what how do you reason all of this well um justin um i like the idea that it's called voluntary contribution pension <laughs> those are the ones that are really really affected and mm. the mandatory contributing pension you know you have to get a certain age to withdraw it if yes. you're retired then if you if you if you lost your job also mm. there's a certain uh, time you have to stay before you can begin to assess those funds or if you yes. resign from your job mm. so i think um, the good news is the mandatory pension and then the scheme is still is still working very well and um, the voluntary one is more or less as a means of saving remember that was introduced to help reduce the house um, different mm. in terms of mortgage if you are able to do to a certain percentage then those um the the, P, uh, the pension fund administrators the PFA will be able to help you. Uh, we, are not, we are not seeing that again because of the hardship. And when you look at those numbers, it's scary because um, uh, when you are seeing about 1,232 voluntary pension uh, 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 contributors mm. from, from the private sector uh, mm. withdrawing, then you see about 43 from the public. From the public. Mm. Amokta, are you with us? Yes. Okay. You go see ahead. about 20, 43 from the mm. public sector 
where you are seeing about 1,020. 1, so it shows that the current economic policy is having, having a huge negative effect on the private sector. And if, when you talk about the private sector, you talk about the former private sector, then you talk about the informal sector, which, uh, which drive over 80% of the Nigeria economy. And so what you are seeing in, in most of the uh, contr uh, voluntary contributing pension are coming from the SMEs, the, 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 the informal sector. So that you tell you the kind of pressure that is in that sector, assistance, now that means some of the businesses are not striving, so mm -hmm. the salary has not been increased. And what it means is that a lot of those people that are withdrawing may have been people that are out of job at the moment. So yeah. it's scary because the key driver of any uh, economy is the private sector. So I think um, government need to look at some of the policy that have negatively impacted on the private sector. One of those very huge policies, the increase in tariff mm. of electricity, government really need to look at that so that the cost of production will come down. Because this is a pointer to tell you that uh, a lot of um, uh, companies are actually laying off their workers and those workers are not being paid. And so that's why they have to go to their voluntary retirement pension to keep head out of water. And also maybe some of them also, they are still being paid salary. Their salary has not been increased. So they have to go to their voluntary pension to begin to make sure that they are able to keep their head out of water. So it's something the government, so mm -hmm. state when they come in, government is supposed to look at it critically and begin to look at ways whereby they can step in because that's the work of the physical side. The mm -hmm. monetary side will always do what they ought to do. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mokhtar Mohammed. Uh, indeed, we can only do our bit by analyzing these issues and um, uh, be, stay hopeful that the federal government would actually key into all of this insights and do the needful so that Nigerians can actually live uh, normal lives and be able to save for the future and, of course, uh, be able to sleep with both eyes closed and be able to even have food in their stomachs. Many thanks once again. Mokhtar Mohammed is an international finance and economic analyst. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure, Justin. Thank you. All right. That's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being a part of it. Bye for now.